So we're back now to uh, placing the blue ground over, working up some of the, the blues and darks. So we can just see these lines through it. But there's beautiful sky to do in this painting as well, which I'm looking forward to doing with the roller. So here we go. Actually I've just changed back to ordinary acrylic body for this job because we only need it to be transparent after all. The important thing is to clear, cover all this <coughs> white canvas, not leave any texture showing at all. So it's going to be quite brave. I suppose some of you think, oh, it's all, he's done it before, it's nice and easy for him. But no, it's still a challenge, and start a new painting, it's often daunting. Okay, got the base on. Now we need to uh, start working up the colours. Let's take a nice deep Prussian blue and start to work that in. We should really get some nice glazing effects as well as the change in tones and values. I can come over and over these again as much as I want just to get the effects that I want. Beautiful effects this way. And all I'm doing is working up my base colours, giving the foundation. And that gives us our basic grounding of the darks, I think. So we're right there, we just have to get the other colours working over it now. Glow there, let that dry off. Okay, let's work on it now, it's dried a bit. And, uh, I'm using the roller for a bit, although it, I'm very tempted to hit this with a palette knife actually, and um, a painting knife and start scraping the wonderful clouds through here and building it up that way so there will be different techniques being used in these paintings. 
But for the moment, we'll just carry on with uh, the roller. And uh, next colour is going to be some cerulean coming into a bit of turquoise actually. Mm -hmm. Lovely effects we can hopefully get with this. And I could use glazes with the brush, but I'm just playing around with texturing on the roller at the mm -hmm. moment. Have a slightly more contemporary feel to it and play with the paint as much as the effects we're going to need elsewhere. Now, into that we'll take some white, using heavy body white obviously, to get uh, these lighter colours, and it wants to go much more yellow. So I'll add some yellow into that as well. Right up and through here, just wisping through and into this little darker area here. We've got the patterns in the sky coming up and through then. So if we use it a little bit drier as a dry brush technique, we could just roll in these effects into here. Now I want to start to move towards the pinks, so we'll take some magenta into that same colour. Light at first, and then we'll go slightly darker. Very light at first, and uh, stronger colours I go on. You can see the sort of effects I'm getting aren't far off what we have here. So it's so versatile this way of working with the uh, sponge rollers. Nice luminous effect. And we go stronger with it. We'll add some slightly deeper magenta. And we'll keep adjusting these colours and playing with these colours as we find what we need. Back into the turquoise. The actual turquoise itself, pure I think now. And when we go again, that's it. Nice bit of ultramarine now, really rich ultramarine, but I'm going to put a little bit of um, rose of uh, alizarin crimson into it just to make it a bit more a wee touch of ceremony on there. I think I might have to use a, looking at these, I might have to use a um, Prussian blue soon because there's a, an acidy blue in this that I haven't got yet. The Prussian will give me that. Let's just try this blue first and see what we get here. Yeah. Try a bit of Prussian blue and white now here. And you see it's a completely different, more acidic blue. It's a very nice colour. Just a little bit down into here just to get the feeling of the, just to give the different feelings of those cool and warm blues. So we've got the turquoises and cerulean's down here with this new Prussian. Right, now let's go back to our turquoise again. So turquoise pure and just a, a tad of white. And I'm going to add a bit of green to it in a minute. So we get that going. A new roll, I don't want the paint too wet, that's the point. Okay, more white still. So we just have really light oh, colour of that. Almost to a cream, in fact. Turquoise keeps sinking, so I'm going to add some turquoise to the colour I've just been doing, and a little bit of very light green as well. We'll just try playing some of that at the top here. I think we're on the way with that sky. I think we'll leave the sky at that because I think that's as neat as I want to go in this case. So let's work on now down to the uh, horizon. I think we'll carry on with brushes now.
Well, I've got the sky done um, last night. I need to work down into the horizon and work out all of these mid-tones coming up from the darks, gradually getting lighter and lighter. Then we finish with the highlights at the very end. So at the moment then I've got to get in all these um, pinks and very light blues and so on going on behind here. And I'm going to use my flat brushes for that. continue with this now and um, I've got the basics done. I don't want it to become too technique-y. What I thought I'd do now is move on to some of my rake brushes on this for the little lights. And that gives I'm talking about these brushes which you can see have the um, serrated edges. Which you can see have these serrated edges here. So I'll use those by um, mixing up some cream just to show you how we can hopefully make all these little details of distant lights. I'm going to use very, very light cream. We should be able to start getting the effect of all these little lights. I want to make them to patterns, they want to be different lights. I don't want to use sponges for this, this should work out alright. Like little lines of them along here. 
Now I don't normally need many brushes for doing an acrylic because I normally need most of my textural brushes for uh, liquid colours. But actually, here yeah, I'm uh, needing a few more textural brushes. You play these different yellows together, the warm and the cool yellows, right through to the oranges. Effect of all these street lights. And people think we spent ages and ages making hundreds and hundreds of dots, and we what's happened to produce some penny a yard. Quite a mass of texture. Interesting to take it this direction. I don't know quite where this painting's going to go. Cadmium orange to it now, and a little bit darker. The colours sinking in now. Suddenly the painting seeming more finished. So I don't know how much more I've got to actually do. Now I think I just need to go in with dots and dashes. I've taken a little round brush now. So just one or two fine details to do. Sort of dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Nice forms. That'll help the here and hopefully will help the blues in the background as well because these reds will sing against it. And the opposites to red would be green, so let's take a bit of very deep green here and just start to work into some points. I'm talking about the water, I'm not altogether happy with that. I have to take a large brush and do a little bit of wash work. flat. Not huge but large. I want to just play with a little bit of this magenta going on down into here. Some of the warms. The two colours are not quite making sense here. How much further to go? Because it can fiddle around with something that's make it just too itsy bitsy if we're not careful. Amazing how just a few little marks can make such a difference. We have to be very careful because we can do the opposite from up here just to bring them out. Our little buildings that we've got that just need one or two of the right colours just enhancing. And look at the extra three dimensional effect this gives when I start playing with these darks here. Yeah. Really does bring things out. I was just going to leave the background as it was, but I've just realised now that with these darks in I can really start to enhance it more. And this is the point I said about painting loosely. We can, we can come back whenever we want to be tight. And we can build it up to be tight. But we can't go back um, once we've made it tight. It's very difficult to go back to being loose. So we'll make that decision to start with. Just go with that large brush again. Go back and forwards until I'm absolutely happy. Let's take a larger brush and just want to touch some that turquoise. Maybe a touch of turquoise more here and there. You don't have to fiddle too much. Ah, there's something I've missed there. It's very, very bright green. Which I've only just noticed, but it is quite important up here. I can get that now. It's uh, yellow and green together. I don't know, even with these heavy bodies, whether I can do it. But let's just see if we can get some of that green in there because it's quite an important colour. It plays against the other colours so much there. So it's just now highlighting and little bits of finishing off to do. It's just these salient points, there's a few marks that obviously need doing in the work that can just pull it together and I just need to find those where they are to balance out the painting. And there we go. Well, there we are. There's the final thing. Um, it's rather detailed. Maybe we've gone a little bit too far that direction. But we'll see where we go with the next one. I was loosening up with these rather than going tighter, but it's been rather fun playing with all these different textures and techniques. So we'll take a close look at it. Now 
because the camera's making the light a little bit lighter than it actually was in the real thing, but there's our sky.